teach the students in front of you. Easier said than done. Hi, I'm Terry Darty. The question today is, what is SEOP? SEOP is an acronym for Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. Yes, that's a mouthful. Basically, it means applying the scientific method to education. I come from a background uh, where this actually makes a lot of sense to me because at one point I was a biological technician. I spent a lot of time um, working on protocols, following protocols, making observations and adjusting experiments. And applying those same techniques to education has come somewhat naturally to me. The CEOP method uh, provides a framework for teachers as they design and deliver lessons that are appropriate and understandable for the students in front of them. Dr. Jane Ekachaberia uh, and her team at the um, University of Southern California brought together a number of pedagogical concepts early in this century and put them into a framework that we now call SEOP, or if we have time, Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. This will be the first in a series in which we examine SEOP, the concepts underlying it, and hopefully find some useful applications in your classroom. What does SEOP mean? Let's start with sheltered. Sheltered instruction conforms goals and methods to the experience and capacity of students. In the modern classroom in many countries now, the student audience is very diverse. Uh, many different backgrounds, many different um, first languages, and many different cultural perspectives. So we can't simply go into the classroom and begin teaching at the level with the goals that we happen to have in our book from things that we've done year after year. We have to assess the situation. Otherwise, we're going to overwhelm or underwhelm or be ineffective with our students. Thus, sheltered. We try to build a structure in our classroom that helps our students to learn. Instruction. Instruction in the modern classroom is student-centric with a focus on learning more than teaching. We'll get into a little more detail on this as we go along. Observation is a scientific approach which responds to actual results as each course progresses. Much like the lab experiments that I did when I was much younger, um, every new class is an experiment in education and we have to take an observation approach and a scientific approach to achieve not just our goals, but the goals of our students. Finally, protocol reflects the accumulation of standards, uh, methods that are validated by observation. What that means is we do the experiment of being in the classroom, we look at what's going on, we try different methods to teach, and then we write them down, we get them organized, and then we do it again and over time, we develop a body of methods, protocols that we can use that are going to be more effective than just going into the classroom and winging it or repeating what we happened to do last year. SEOP is designed to balance the goals of teacher and learner. I like to use the yin-yang um, approach. Teaching is one part of the whole. Learning is the other part of the whole. 
quite often teachers are focused almost entirely on teaching. They develop beautiful plans and they go in and they deliver them, but they don't necessarily see the other side of the equation. And that's learning, the learner. The learner has their own goals. They have their own reasons for being in the class. They have their own capacities. And unless we assess those, unless we understand the learner's background, we're not going to be effective at teaching. <clears throat> There's a couple of ways to look at classrooms, but two uh, prevalent ways in many universities around the world, many other educational institutions around the world, is one is basically the next the lecture method. That is the sage on the stage. A guru steps up, tells the truth, students write it down, everyone goes away. The other is as the guide on the side. Basically, in this case, we put our students into a situation where they are learning, but they're not simply writing down what we tell them. They are doing some little experiments of their own in a guided way to find the truth rather than simply have it delivered. We all remember, we all treasure things that we discover a lot more than the things that are simply handed to us. In this series, we're going to go beyond the general definition of SEOP. We're going to look at a series of core concepts that really make SEOP go. One of those is background. Knowing the student's background understanding what they can do and what they want to do will make us more effective teachers. Model. Modeling what we want the students to do, demonstrating to the students that we can do it. We're not going to simply tell them to go out and climb a rope. We're going to climb the rope and show that it can be done, and then we're going to have them climb it. Practice. That's them climbing the rope. The only way that we become good is through practice. Practice makes perfect. Application. Once we've practiced, the student asks, has to actually apply what they've learned. We remember the things that we originate, the things that we do for ourselves. Preparation. Preparation of the, um, the classroom for learning is not something that you do when you step into the classroom. It requires a lot of, of, of forethought. Review. Once we've laid out a body of knowledge, once we have um, demonstrated it and practiced it, then it's important to review it. Um, repetition can be overdone, but some level of repetition is important to the success of accomplishing our objectives. Strategy. We have to have a big plan. We have to know what we're trying to accomplish in a particular class, and we have to know where we want to get to. It's very much like the uh, adventurer who sees the mountain that they want to climb, but first they have to go down the road, they have to cross the creek, they have to make their way up the paths, they may have to be prepared to fall off the mountain from time to time, and but the, the adventurer who plans in advance has a strategy for achieving success will get there. Assessment. Did our students learn? Are they mastering the technique? Can we turn around to our administrators and say, yes, this student is ready to go on to more complex learning? 
Interaction. Interaction is uh, how we build engagement in the classroom. Part of it has to do with our interaction with the students, but an awful lot, particularly online, has to do with interaction between the students themselves. Delivery. How are we going to deliver the learning? Are we going to just lay it out as a lecture? Are we going to prepare a PowerPoint and deliver it? Are we going to do hands-on experiments? Um, each of these has positive features. And we have to determine, as part of our strategy, which is going to be most effective for a certain phase of the teaching process. And finally, comprehensible. Students um, need to be able to be comprehensible. The focus of CIOP is on learning English as a second language. The concepts, however, will apply to the learning of any language, or in a general way, they will apply to mastering any body of knowledge. We need to move our English students towards making themselves understood. Perfection is not the goal. Intelligibility, being understood, is the goal. And as teachers, we need to make ourselves understandable, comprehensible for our students. Next time, we're going to look at four key concepts, background, modeling, practice, and application. I'll see you then.